NerdErotic.com. Greetings, you over 786,000 practitioners of common sense and the 40% who haven't subscribed yet. I want you to look for a lot of I told you so's and F*** you, I was right, F*** you, I was right. Over the next year, currently, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dysentery is the flop heard around the world. And it is competing with The Flash to become the biggest bomb of the year. And it is certainly the biggest financial disaster in Lucasfilm's history, or in this case, I should say, herstory. I have some major problems with this movie. One of the problems I have with the movie is that uh, Phoebe's character was an asshole. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And that's a good thing for Netflix because fewer people have noticed A, The Witcher Season 3 even came out, and B, that it's abysmal. A while back, I made a video called The Witcher is Doomed, one that was covered by Asmongold. Thanks, dude. Well, here we are seven short months later, and the beginning of the end is here. The chat says that he's leaving because he doesn't agree with the storylines that the writers have been developing. If that's the case, I can completely understand that because Henry is such a huge mm. fan of the games and the books and the writers on the Netflix series have chosen for whatever reason they did so to deviate quite severely from the books and the games. Um, I personally don't understand the choice. Now, all of this could have been avoided if you listen to the fans, just like with Kathleen Kennedy over at Lucasfilm. If you had listened to the fans, you had multiple times to fire her after The Last Jedi, after Solo, after The Rise of Skywalker, after she fired Gina Carano. But beyond all rational explanation, she is still in charge and look where it's gotten them. We've also seen this with Chris Chibnall and the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker. Those two were only shown the door after the show had completely cratered. Same goes for Alex Kurtzman, who's been killing Star Trek now for years. Yes, he did have a recent success with Picard Season 3, one he had nothing to do with, but now he's gone right back to killing Star Trek, and now two of his shows have been canceled with more to come. This kid's got to go back to preschool. Michelle Yeoh is set to star in her own Star Trek movie. Oh, f*** it. Oh, s***. Right. Right. And now Netflix is doing the same thing. The second Henry Cavill started having a problem with Lauren Schmidt Hissridge's writing, she and her entire staff should have been gone. Admittedly, despite it having problems, I did like season one. Gave it a seven out of 10, but this is the portion of the video where I get some I told you so's. I told you so. I told you. I earned that. Despite my age, I'm still capable of being a sweet summer child. Now let's do a brief recap of The Witcher's Road to Failure. After a very successful season one where Netflix thought they had their Game of Thrones, we started hearing some concerning comments from Henry Cavill. With the shift of the showrunner's vision where it's an ensemble cast more so than a singular lead and the perspectives is shifted to be almost more of a Cirilla Yennefer perspective. And so it's about finding my character's place within that vision and making sure that I do everything I can to be as faithful to the source material as possible within the structure set out for me. That was Henry trying to temper our expectations and that's a good thing because then season two came out and they absolutely butchered the book Blood of Elves after Lauren Schmidt Hissridge completely ignored the fan complaints of there not being enough Witcher in The Witcher, she decided to put less Witcher in The Witcher for season two. Then we heard from former Witcher writer Bo DeMeo that writers on the show were openly mocking the source material. Then on October 13th of 2022, Henry Cavill announced he was leaving The Witcher and it all gets worse from here. Shortly after that, a petition was started with over 300,000 signatures. Netflix, you must keep Henry Cavill as The Witcher and replace the writers instead. Then after that, we started to understand why Henry not only left, he ran. Blood Origin was released with a whopping 13% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes and a 1.4 user score on Metacritic. Making a pretty good case of being worst fantasy series in a year that Willow and the Rings of Power came out. But that was just a taste. What did Lauren Hisrich and her patriarchy smashing writing team have up their sleeves next? This brings us to The Witcher Season 3. First off, props to Henry Cavill for being a true professional. 
part of being a professional is showing restraint. And I'm sure the first time he saw that script, he wanted to set it on fire and tell him to piss off. In season three, just like in season two and actually season one, everyone's after Siri. As the synopsis goes, as monarchs, mages, and beasts of the continent compete to capture her, Geralt takes Ciri of Sintra into hiding, determined to protect his newly reunited family against those who threaten to destroy it. Season 3 is based on the book A Time for Contempt, which is appropriate because Lauren Hisrich has obvious contempt for The Witcher and men in general. At this point, you should just call the show The Witch Her, because this is clearly the Yennefer show and it always has been one more time as. I told you so. Yennefer, Ciri, and their sidekick Geralt are all together again, except there's a little problem. I seem to recall last season that Yennefer betrayed both Geralt and Ciri. And then Yennefer goes so far as to try to sacrifice Ciri to get her magic back. But apparently Ciri and Yennefer worked it out before the season started, and it only takes a couple episodes for Geralt to forgive Yennefer. But why take the time to have Yennefer authentically redeem herself after, quite frankly, butchering her character last season when you could just blow past it and get back to girl bossing? Anya Chalotra as Yennefer and Freya Allen as Siri are fine, but they're given nothing to work with this season. Just like last season, and I know this comes from the books, but Siri is just a girl who's the key to everything. That might have been new at one time, but it's not now. It's just a tired old trope. And Yasker is back to sing another song for Dan Vass to cover. And just in case you haven't heard, Yasker's totally by now because Netflix has been pretty subtle about it. And Yasker spends most of his time in a will gay, won't gay with Prince Radovan. I am not gay. I have relationships with women and sex with men. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. Then there's our list of girl bosses. There's the good girl boss, Tessaia, the bad girl boss, Philippa, the dumb girl boss and elf, Francesca, the former girl boss, Frangilla, who's put on some COVID weight, body positivity girl boss, Margarita, and Ava, who's technically a they-them boss, and a whole host of other characters, including Triss, Istrid, and Kahir. And I can tell you right now, I don't care about any of them. Not enough to even tell you what happens. Sure, there's a couple of decent moments with Lars Mikkelsen's Stregobor or Graham McTavish's Dijkstra, but they are fleeting. And brief moments do not make a show good. And I don't even know what the point was to bring in Emperor Amir to just do his best Cersei Lannister impression. When you have finished this mission, we shall have everything that we want and bart edwards is too young he looks like siri's older brother not her father and this brings us to the show's titular character the witcher Geralt of rivia played by henry cavill who's just an afterthought we're told that this season is far more book accurate i guess except for when it isn't our boy Geralt has done dirty again he's more babysitter than protector and he goes on more inane side quests that didn't happen in the book including one where he finds a fake siri and has to fight a fleshy girl bits monster whose heads are hanging off the wall and look suspiciously like testicles i told you so now this is the only monster he fights alone he gets help from siri on the other two and of course she gets the kill on the final one but why see Geralt of rivia slay monsters when you can see him sitting around and talking to yasker sitting next to beds and crying Crying for his mama. As you may or may not know, Netflix cut this season in half to try to milk Henry Cavill, for lack of a better description, for all he's worth. And if you don't think Netflix is keenly aware that their show is dead, I give you this from Forbes. Netflix throws Liam Hemsworth under the bus in a desperate marketing bid for The Witcher Season 3. And here's the tweet from The Witcher. Just in case you need a reminder, yes, he's still Geralt in season three. Ouch. And where does Lauren Hisrich decide to end this first part of the season? With a ball. Ha! Gay! Which is strange because this show has no balls. And it doesn't end there. This also happens to be the worst episode of the worst season. The episode is mostly told in flashback with multiple repeated scenes. And the big twist is we're not seeing different perspectives. We're simply seeing different angles. I'm not doing this awful writing justice. Again, we see the same scenes twice. We hear the same dialogue twice just from a different angle. Episode five was called The Art of Illusion. And if you weren't sure all is not what it seems, they had some bards singing all is not what it seems over and over again. 
It looks like Lauren Hisrich went to the Ryan Johnson School of Dumb Filmmaking meant to make you believe it's smart. And I know the costuming and the sets have never been spectacular in The Witcher, but it has devolved to being indiscernible from things like Willow, The Wheel of Time, and The Rings of Power. And things like time and distance are completely thrown out the window this season. You have no idea where you are. You have no idea how long anything takes. We know these events take over weeks and months, but in the show it feels like a couple of days. Put simply, this show is dumb. Tell me, why would you drop off all of your things on the top of a cliff when you have to climb down to catch a ferry? How does a peasant get such expensive, modern-looking hair? Why did a monster decide not to eat the diverse cast members? Why do all the mages who we are told are beautiful in the books look like they work for the Netflix marketing department? And how much was the budget cut for this season? The CG largely was laughably bad, including this Siri horse riding scene. This is where we get to see The Wild Hunt, and if you watch Blood Origin, which the vast majority of you didn't, you would know that the mighty and formidable King Aridin is actually just a wafy guy who's mad because his boyfriend died. When the show isn't abysmal, it's incredibly boring, and it's pretty clear Henry Cavill made the right decision. And it looks like the people agree because it is getting destroyed. Thomas S., one star, started off okay, not really, but pacing was strange. Yes, it was. Characters' traveling speed made no sense. Hard to figure out where scenes were taking place and so much side character nonsense that just drags on for no reason. But honestly, watching the last episode, 5, was one of the most painful, difficult things I have watched in a while. A shitty song played over and over again as dialogue and scenes are repeated again and again, all for a reveal we already knew since like season 1. One. <laughs> Josh A, half star, just a teenage love drama, barely made it through the first couple of episodes, but decided to reluctantly chug on. To my dismay, the last episode was the worst of them all. Ion G, half star, season three is more accurate to the books meaning random Easter eggs from the books without context, and the meaning changed so much that it makes no sense. They ruined impactful scenes from the books just to put them in this rotten show. Bad cringe characters are not even book accurate, and I think he meant to say, neither are the monsters. This seems like bad fan fiction. Let me play devil's advocate. Maybe Lauren Hisrich and her team of writers didn't adapt the books properly because they wanted to play to their strengths. The only problem with that argument is, as writers, they don't have any strengths. And it's become abundantly clear Lauren and her team can't write men, but to be fair, they're only slightly worse at that than writing women. I'll remind you that we are going into the third month of the writer's strike, and I would also like to mention that I've spent the last couple of weeks watching things like Strange New Worlds, The Flash, Secret Invasion, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dysentery, and now The Witcher Season 3, and I'm just gonna say, you're not making a good case for yourself go ahead, stay on strike. I don't even care what happens in the second half. The Witcher season three is awful and this show is dead. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. Nerdverotic.com, please subscribe.